Let's talk about the supply chain situation, other topics with Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Mr. Secretary, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on. Here's the president uh, this week talking about addressing this issue and some reaction to what he said. Take a listen. By staying open seven days a week through the night and on the weekends, the port of Los Angeles will open over 60 extra hours a week. Today's announcement has the potential to be a game changer. With all due respect to President Biden, what he just ordered is too little, too late. Whether the ports are open 24 hours a day, or 48 hours a day, you cannot get labor. If you cannot get labor, you cannot get trucks, you cannot get those merchandise out. And even if you get them out, it's gonna to be too late for Christmas. What about that, Mr. Secretary? Is it too little, too late, What's what's been going on? No, but uh, as you heard, the president said this has the potential to be a game changer. It's going to have to be part of a number of steps. Uh, as the report just now showed, a lot of this is not just about the issue of how long the ports are open, which is a big deal, uh, but it's also about the availability of trucks, of chassis, and of truckers to drive them. Look, truckers have been on the front lines of this entire pandemic. Uh, they want to be paid well. They want to be respected. And we do have an issue with a shortage of truck drivers in this country. We have issues with whether the different uh, players on the ports are coordinating with each other, which is why we've been pushing for more data sharing. A lot of things have to go right, but the announcement that these ports would go 24 seven, that's a big part of it. Yeah, this announcement came this week. Uh, Jen Psaki from the White House briefing room said it had been worked on for months, but you could see this coming down the road for a while, couldn't you, Mr. Secretary? Well, yeah, I mean, let's uh, uh, look work backward from this week's announcement. L.A. announced that it was going 24-7. But a few weeks earlier, Long Beach had, had announced their pilot to do that. Now, as you can imagine, a port that massive, flipping to 24-7 is not something you can do overnight. But that work began in July when I convened pretty much the entire ecosystem of uh, supply chain actors who work around those West Coast seaports. Those two ports, by the way, represent 40 percent of the container traffic into this country. And one of the ideas that emerged from that gathering one of the action steps that we wanted to pursue was to expand those hours. You could wind the clock back even further to February, the month that I got this job, and that's when the president, looking ahead, signed that executive order calling for there to be new levels of urgency around the supply chain. Now, obviously, so, these issues didn't emerge overnight, which right. is why not only do we have these near-term steps that we've been taking and coordinating with the private sector on, but also the need for a comprehensive infrastructure bill, the president's infrastructure vision, which includes $17 billion for our ports. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because as Transportation Secretary, you're concerned about ports and bridges and all kinds of avenues of transportation. Why not move the infrastructure bill that has that in it that the House hasn't voted on because the other bill is still being negotiated and debated between Democrats? Well, we're for both of those bills. Uh, I'm a Transportation Secretary. I'm also a new father. And I believe that the president's overall vision of making sure that this is a country where it's affordable to raise a family uh, and making sure uh, that we're supporting Americans with health care and making sure that we deliver on these infrastructure needs. You know, all of these things fit together. And by the way, since we're talking about inflation, I remember, for example, when Moody's Analytics uh, analyzed the effects that uh, these pieces of legislation could have on easing inflationary pressures. They were talking about the entire package. Part of what's going on in our economy, part of what's creating a lot of pressure right now, is issues of labor supply. Those get better if, of course, we beat the pandemic and if we make it easier to get by in this country and make work pay. Right. Well, first of all, congratulations on your new babies. Um, but let me... I guess there are some moderate Democrats up on the Hill who are saying, listen, we have the bird in the hand. Take it now. There are good things in here. Republicans have signed on to it. Why don't you as an administration push for that? Well, again, we very much push for this infrastructure bill. Uh, obviously, I've worked hard on it. The president's worked hard on it. And the same is true for the Build Back Better agenda, things that most Americans agree on. Now we get 
uh, that there are going to be a lot of Republicans who voted with us on the infrastructure bill, uh, who are prepared to vote against us on things like uh, supporting child care and uh, family leave and, and whatever else makes it into that uh, uh, that package on the uh, on the family side. Right. But uh, who are going to be against taking action on climate change. You don't change. think but it's we a... really believe we have to do both. And uh, Republicans will be free to vote for the one half and against the other. I'm not going to belabor this, but you don't think it's a mistake for Speaker uh, Pelosi not to just put that on the floor and see what happens. Uh, I definitely uh, would be humbled by the idea of giving legislative strategy advice to Speaker <laughs> Pelosi. Uh, what I know is that uh, these are important pieces of legislation. They're part of a shared big picture that the president has for how to bring our economy back and, and not just rewind to 2019, but as he always says, build back better, make this uh, a better, safer, more secure country to live in for the rest of our lifetimes and our kids too. There are some critics of the administration who say that um, this, the inability to get truckers, for example, is a direct result, the inability to get labor uh, of unemployment lasting for too long, of this administration not acting differently to inspire those workers to get back on the job. How do you respond to that? Well, it's a very interesting idea that in many ways is freshly disproven because uh, a lot of those benefits ran out and we did not see uh, the kind of effects of people rushing to return to work that uh, you had a lot of those commentators confidently predicting uh, just a few weeks or months ago. So I think what this shows is, is there are deeper issues. Uh, even if you very much want to work, if you can't get childcare, uh, or if you're worried about your physical safety because we haven't beaten the pandemic, those are going to be drags on labor supply, which is exactly why the president has been focused on those kinds of issues. But if these bills don't get through because of this back and forth between progressives and moderates, what's the next step for this administration? What are you going to do action-wise beyond what you're doing right now? Well, uh, look, we're going to get these bills through because it's too important for the American people. And again, uh, you know, Republicans are welcome to join moderate and progressive Democrats on making sure that happens, although I know uh, that's perhaps not likely. Well, there uh, are Republicans on the infrastructure option, bill, Mr. Secretary. Secretary. There are Republicans on that bill. And, uh, and if, you put it on the, if you put it on the floor, it might pass. Mm -hmm. I would be delighted to see Republicans vote for acting on climate change, for uh, supporting family policies, uh, for tax fairness. I don't think you have to be a Democrat to think that it makes no sense that you've got uh, multi-billion dollar profitable corporations that have in some cases paid zero in taxes. I think this can be a unifying agenda. Just like the president's idea that we got to buy America more, which, by the way, is something else that would uh, really help with some of these issues we have with uh, keeping up with imports. You know, these are things that uh, uh, most Americans agree on uh, that I would like to think there can be support for across the aisle, just like the president successfully secured support across the aisle for this ambitious vision to improve everything from our ports to our roads, bridges, highways, Internet, pipes and more. Yeah. So are new parents and any parent going to get the toys that they want to get for Christmas? Well, I know that uh, I'll be uh, very excited to shop for uh, uh, the first Christmas for uh, uh, for my new kids. And uh, uh, look, uh, uh, one of the things that really impressed me when we brought together business leaders, uh, and we had a convening earlier this week where we had the leaders of Walmart, Target, the Home Depot, as well as uh, FedEx, UPS, uh, was how committed they are to taking steps over and above what they've already been doing at a time when retail sales are through the roof. Remember, you can't talk about supply without talking about demand. Right. Part of the reason we are where we are is that the president successfully brought this economy so, out of the teeth of a recession. So you're saying People that's- are buying more than ever before. We're seeing record uh, goods coming through our ports. Uh, the demand is there, which is which is great news. It represents a policy success. Now we got to make sure those supply chains are there to support it. So you're saying that's a high class problem. What I'm saying is that we are better off because the economy is growing and the economy is growing thanks to the leadership of this president. All right, Mr. Secretary, we always re appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.